Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Webinar Wednesday, our monthly series of webinars covering different areas of our Prophecy Dispatch Series software. I'm Carol Ashburn, the Director of Marketing here at Prophecy, and I'm so happy to have so many of you with us today. These webinars are free to you as part of your Complete Care subscription, and they're designed to help you get the most out of your Prophecy software solutions. These webinars are for you, so if there's a topic you'd like to see covered in a future webinar, I invite you to drop us an email at webinars at mile.com, that's webinars at mile.com, with your suggestion, and we'll do our best to work it into a future presentation. Today our topic is handling split loads within Prophecy Dispatch, and so we've named this one Splitsville, the scoop on split trips in Prophecy Dispatch. Presenting today is Steve Knauber. He's one of our senior implementation consultants. He's been with us for about 16 years here at Prophecy and has a lot of expertise to share, a lot of time spent within the program. So this should be a great presentation. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Steve. Thank you, Carol. I appreciate the introduction. Um, everyone, thank you for joining us today. Uh, as Carol said, we are going to be going over Splitsville. Splitsville is the scoop on split trips in Prophecy Dispatch. Just so everyone knows, I will be muting all of the participants um, until the question and answer period, which will be after the presentation. So um, you are all on mute at this point. Any questions that you will have, I would need you to just ask, please, to log them. Um, and when we open it up for questions at the end, uh, we will do our best to be able to address all of those questions in the allotted time period. And then any questions that don't get addressed or that might need further resolution, you know that you can always contact, contact us here at Prophecy through um, our support ticket system uh, or also through email through your account reps. So what we're going to be reviewing today um, with the split trips is when and where to use your splits, okay? How to split a trip. Meaning the best place uh, within the program, should you be splitting from your dispatch board? Should you be splitting from, um, from the assignment screen? Allocation of revenue. What does that mean? I'm sure everyone that splits trips sees the word allocate at some point. What's going on? What is allocating revenue? Viewing split trip info. Once I split a trip, what do I view? What am I looking at? How, am I, how do I view it? What does it look like on my invoice? Is there some way for me to see both sides of the split and understand what's going on? I'm going to show you that as well. Yeah. We're also going to look at right-click splitting. This is from the dispatch board. We can right-click split versus using the split button, um, identifying a split, and how to start over. What do I do when I make a mistake? This is my favorite one. This very quick topic, that one there. So without further ado, we're going to actually get into the demo portion. So I'm going to move into my own database at this point. Um, these are just pretend loads, made up locations. Uh, the concepts should all still be the same. So what I've done is I've set up a few pending loads. Now, one of the first things we, we want to talk about is why do you split a trip? Okay. And essentially, there are a couple of different scenarios under the conditions that you want to split a trip. But most, are, most of the time, the, the reason is because you have one driver that is picking the freight up. He's either a local driver on the front end that's picking it up locally, bringing it to the yard to drop the trailer so that maybe um, a second driver, an over-the-road driver, can then continue to take it from the yard and bring it to its delivery location. So that is what I would probably say is the most common reason for splitting trips. Second is, is a breakdown. Driver's driving, he's driving, if the truck breaks, he needs help, you send another truck to uh, rescue the trailer and bring it to its final destination. Um, back with the original example of having a driver pick it up, well obviously that, that option dropping in the yard could also happen at the back end as well, um, where an over the road driver brings it to the yard to drop it and then a local guy will make the delivery. So that, that kind of local to over-the-road exchange or over-the-road to local can either happen on the front end or on the back end of the load. Or in some cases, 
both ends, depending on how many yards you might operate. Okay? So those are the actual reasons on why would we be splitting. And, and just common, I'm sure that everyone could think of another reason that I didn't mention, but I would probably say most commonly those are the reasons. Now, um, where do we split the load from it within the program? And basically, the physical proximity of where. Um, I'm going to make a couple of attempts to show you. So right from the dispatch board, I can right mouse click and I can split the load right off of the right mouse click menu. Okay? So you can see split load. I'm just going to click on it and it's going to initialize the split screen. Okay? So this is the actual split window. This is the same split window that I would get if I were in the assignment screen. In the assignment screen, you will notice that you have a split load button. So I can click that as well. Same split window. So is one better than the other? The answer is no, it's the same window. What makes one better than the other is the proximity, your proximity. Where am I located at the time that I decide that I want to split the load? How do I decide I want to split loads? In other words, you can split a load when it is pending, and you can split a load after you've assigned it. There are pros and cons to each one, and most of, and the best way, and this is, I had this question this morning, what's the best way, Steve? And I said, thank you for that question, but the best way, Kevin, is the way that works best for you, okay? If it's better for you to split the load before you assign the driver because you want to have split it in its pending status, then that's the best way for you. For other people, they want to assign the pickup driver first, and that's very important to note. Always assign the pickup driver first. Then I can split the load after it's assigned. Okay? We can split the load with revenue on it or without revenue. It's still going to split the load. There are advantages and disadvantages to each. Okay? And we're going to try to cover all those situations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to book a nice, fresh, new load. I'm going to click Book New. So you know that right now what I'm doing is I'm just going to pick a customer, and then I'm going to pick my location where it's going to pick up. And now I'm going to also put in my delivery here. Okay? Now, one thing I want to tell you is an option that you can also have is when you're booking the load, if you know, if your splits are planned, you can actually insert your split point before your pickup and delivery. And I have a yard location, Kim's yard. And in Kim's yard, I would remove the billable check. What this does is it will insert Kim's yard in Bristol, so Newington to Bristol and then Bristol to Brooklyn, New York. This inserts my yard location without the customer seeing it. By removing the billable option, it's no longer visible, but it will appear in my itinerary, so I don't have to insert that point later. Okay? So I'm going to save this. I'm just going to let it default into the current dates and times. All right? Now, I like to rate my loads. When I rate the load, it puts the revenue on it. I like to rate my loads on the front before I split because there's a feature in the program. It's an allocation. It allocates the revenue. Basically, it distributes the revenue proportionately based on where the split occurs, meaning the percentage of the, the, the distance into the trip, whatever that percent of miles into the trip in which you split, will be the percent of the revenue that is distributed to each portion. So if I have $1,400, I'm using $1,400 for round numbers, and I split my trip halfway through, that's a 50-50 split. It would give me $700 on the front half and $700 on the back half. Okay? 60-40, it distributes it differently. 80-20 distributes it differently. We're going to show you, and once I split it, I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to make this very, this very first one very easy. We're going to save the load. It's a pending load. Okay. I can now choose, I'm going to hit refresh so we see that new pending load. I'm going to choose it, I'm going to choose and split it as a pending load. It becomes very simple. So right mouse click, split the load. All right. This is your split screen. These are my itinerary points here. I'm going to highlight the point in which I want to make the split occur. My split options. These are 
I read these to this day, as Carol mentioned, I've been here for 16 years. I still read these to myself in my head in the form of a question. I'm going to do it out loud today. Now, the first two are grayed out because we don't have any assignments. Because it's a pending load, the first two don't apply. So the next one, and this is how I read it, I say, do I want to? Do I want to complete the current leg of the load? So what the current leg is, is when I'm splitting, it's, cre it, it's creating two loads out of one. The current load being load number 1135, where the split portion will become 1135S, and the S is for split. Do I want to complete the current leg? That's from Newington to Bristol. Would I like that current leg to be marked completed? Okay. Now, because it's a pending load and I haven't made any assignments, the clear answer to me is no. So to say no, I leave it unchecked. All right. If I check it, it would complete the current leg, but of course I have no resources on it, so then I'd have a co completed load with just a customer and, and no truck and trailer, and that would equal bad other things, so I'm going to avoid doing that. So I want to highlight my split point, okay, and I'm going to hit split load. Confirmation. You're going to split it in Bristol. Well, look, I can move these windows around, and I'm going to verify Bristol. Yep, check. That's where I want it split. Your new load number, 1135S, the S stands for split. Okay? Today I saw somebody, they went in and they, did, they said A. If you want to replace the S with an A, so you have the, the root number and then A afterwards, it's up to you. I didn't see anything wrong with that. But the system by default will make it an S for split. Then I'm going to click OK. No resources are flagged for payments. Makes sense, right? I didn't put any on there. Makes sense that none were flagged for payments. So again, I'll say OK. Now I'm going to come up here and hit Refresh. See this? I have 135 and 135S. This one starts at Newington to Bristol. This Bristol to Brooklyn. The two pieces make the full trip. In other words, the start to finish, but I can now dispatch them as two individual pieces, which means I go in and I F11 and I can make my local driver assignment. Okay? So I can just, I'm just going to pick somebody from my, my list here. So I'm managing them independently. So that's when I hit refresh. That is now an assigned load with a driver, tractor, and trailer. Well, now I have to assign this load number as well. It's independent. I have to, it's a completely separate assignment. But this represents the person that will take it from my yard to the final destination. Now, notice that I wanted to, I actually want to pay particular attention to what trailer was used. Because if I want that trailer to be the same trailer, I have to make sure it gets assigned to the second part as well. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to assign it. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to choose Julie. I'm going to pull a factor number here. Kingsbury. Okay. And on my trailer, I'm going to make sure that I get the right trailer number. So when I save and go back to my board, the same trailer is assigned on both loads. Now from a dispatcher's management, this first load has this first one, the 135, would have to mark in route first, right? That one's going to pick up. It's going to go in route. This one cannot start until this one delivers. And by I say it can't, you physically could make it, but it doesn't make sense. Obviously, this one shouldn't leave the yard until this one has delivered. Right? Otherwise, they're leaving without something very important, and that's the freight that the first guy is bringing. So once this one delivers, that one comes off my active board, and now the pending or the pre-assigned from the yard to the destination, I can now status change that and mark it in route. Okay? So it's that was we split the load. It was a pending load. We assigned our resources afterwards, okay? This, and, and then we had to manage them individually, all right? 
Now, I want to take an opportunity. We're going to sh I'm going to show you several more examples. But while in this load, I want to show you a couple of things. First off, allocated. Okay? okay. You can see where it says allocated there. The reason why it says allocated is because the system is telling me that $162 is not the full amount. Okay? Clearly, if you remember, it was approximately $1,400 and change. Well, this is my visual indicator to let me know. So I'm going to click Next. And you'll see that on 1135S, which is the next, here's the remaining $1,300. The question is, well, why did it put so much on the back end? Well, because from Bristol to Brooklyn, if we look at our itinerary, it's only 12 miles, right? So let's say that it's 90%, 10%, 10% of the revenue here, 90% of the revenue here. So what did it do? It divided the revenue, 90% of the revenue here, 90% of the 1400 ended up on the Bristol to Brooklyn leg. The remaining 10%, the 162, that, that got allocated to the front half. Right. So this is what should make everybody feel all better is that when you print your invoice, the system puts the pieces back together. I don't see the allocations on my invoice. Here's my 1470. To the customer, it's it's invisible. Right? They don't they have no idea because we put the pieces back together. We allocate the revenue for reporting purposes, for for comparing. Am I paying my driver more than what is what the system is allocating in terms of what that leg is worth in, in revenue. Okay? If you are, you're losing money on that leg, but maybe it's okay. You don't, but it allows you to see it. If you don't allocate the revenue, then you have a, a total negative expense with no revenue on that portion of the leg to offset it. Right? And that's why that revenue allocation is important. I will tell you there is a preference in the system that allows you to not allocate. See this option here in your preferences under rating defaults? Allocate rating on split or reconsolidating loads. I can turn that off. I do not have to allocate revenue if I do not want to. It leaves all the revenue on the front half. It does not allocate any revenue to the split portion. Okay? I am not a personal fan of that, all right? but you may be, and that's okay. And that is an option, and you can turn it on and or off. So again, entirely up to you. All right. Okay. So that very first one was splitting a pending load that had revenue on it. Okay. So the next scenario that I want to do is I want to split an assigned load. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an existing pending load, okay? So I'm just going to double click on it. Um, what's today's date? The 18th. So I built this this morning at 9 a.m. Okay, said pick up at 9, deliver at 1. In this example, I did not insert my, my split yard, okay? I did that on purpose, right? I am, I'm also going to rate this load. I'm going to do one where we don't rate the load first. But for now, I'm going to continue to rate the load. Then we go into the assignment screen. And this is where I always tell people, it's, sometimes it confuses a lot of people because they say, well, well, I'm splitting the load. I want to make sure. And they get very fixated on the delivery driver and the delivery truck. When splitting a load, before you split, you always assign the pickup driver. All right, because the load has to start with a pickup. I want my pickup driver. So I'm just going to double click on my pickup driver. I'm going to give him a tractor number. All right, this guy, I'm going to share some trucks here. And I'm going to pick a trailer from my trailer list as well. Okay. So I now have driver, tractor, and trailer. I'm going to save the load. I can even mark the load in route. doesn't matter. Assigned in route is... It depends all in real life how you're managing your loads, right? So if I have this driver assigned and I hit refresh, now I have my assigned load, well then my next 
the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to change the status and I'm going to mark this driver in route. Well, now it's an in route load. I still need to split it. I still need to tell the system that this driver, Joe, is not making the delivery. Okay? Now, before I do anything else, for the people that calculate the driver's pay on the upfront, I'm going to do that right now. Okay? Now I'm going to make sure my driver has, so 22%. 22% of the revenue, but right now the revenue is $1,200, because again, the system doesn't know that Joe, it's assuming Joe is going the entire way. So Joe picked it up, Joe's in route. Joe's getting paid 22% of $1,200, because that's all the system currently knows about Joe in this load. Now I can choose to either split the load from the assignment window or from the dispatch board. Doesn't matter. Does the same thing. So we hit split load. Same split screen. Okay? Couple of very different items going on here that we did not have the last time. Okay? First off, my split point. It's missing. I didn't put one in, that's why it's missing. So I actually have to add it to my itinerary. So I like to position my cursor because when you position your cursor, when you click add, the insert will occur, the addition of the new point will default to inserting before your cursor location. Notice how the stops, one, two, three, are actually numbered. So I'm gonna click add. My new add point, and again, these windows move, so move them. It, it helps. So I've moved this to be stop, uh, to, so that I can see these points. So one, two, this will become stop three, and my old stop three will become stop number four automatically. You'll see how it works in, the, in a minute. I want to make sure that I arrive at the right time. I need to arrive at my yard after my pickup but before my delivery. If I don't, then my times will be out of sequence. So I'm just going to go 06, 18, 14, and I'm going to just say 10 a.m. I do not need to depart. It is not a dead head leg. This is loaded freight because Joe has already picked it up in Newington and is en route to my yard. And I'm going to use my Kim's yard in Bristol. I'm going to save. And it inserts. See how it inserted it? Right where I wanted it to go. Now, here's the thing. If it doesn't end up where you want it to go, you can actually move it down and move it up using the move up, move down button. Okay? I can even delete it if I really screwed it up. Okay? So you have options here. Okay? Once I've inserted my split point, now I have to go up here and I have to start answering these questions, okay? And as I said, I still read them to myself, usually in my head, but now I'm going to do it out loud. And the first one says, do I want to assign the trailer with the new load? Well, what does that mean? It means that this trailer number, if this is checked yes, then it will automatically assign this trailer number to the new load. What's the new load? The new load will be load number 1119S. That's the new load. So do I want this trailer to go onto that new load? And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that probably 99% of the time, for most of you, the answer will be yes. The guy that's dropping the trailer, that trailer is going to be the same trailer that for the next guy picking it up. The only time that it isn't really the case would be if you're splitting it because the trailer broke and you've got a guy that's driving out a new trailer and you're just going to offload from one from the broken trailer to the new trailer. Right? That would be an example of when you might have a new trailer. Or in the yard, maybe if you do a border cross where you actually offload the freight off of the trailer and put it on another trailer that's going to cross the border for you. That would be another example where someone would bring in where that trailer does not continue. But I would think for most of you that would be a, a, a more rare exception that the majority of the time the trailer continues. The next question, do I want to? Assign the tractor with the new load. That means is the truck going to continue on? Well, guess what? Probably not, right? 
I mean, is it possible that the one guy is going to climb out of the truck and another guy climbs in and continues driving? Yes, that is very possible. You have a weekend guy that goes around, makes a bunch of, does the pickups, brings them into the yard, leaves the units connected with the trailers, and then the, then the guys come in Monday morning, get in the trucks and drive them off? Sure, that's possible. Is that the most likely case? No, probably not, right? But that's what this means. So I'm not going to check this. I do not want the tractor to move on. Complete the current leg. Great question. Do I want to complete the current leg? Well, is Joe in my yard? Because the only answer to this is whether or not he's done or not. If I'm splitting this before he's arrived in the yard, then no, I don't want to complete it. If he's sitting in the yard and, he's, and it's already delivered and I'm, uh, he's already dropped it in the yard and I'm splitting this after he's already unhooked the trailer, then guess what? Yeah, Joe's done. Let's complete his load. I can complete it, he can get paid, and I can make the newest, and then I'll make the new assignment right away. Okay? It's situational. If you want to pre complete it before he arrives because you're confident Joe is going to make it without issue, well, go ahead and complete it. I can always revert it back to in route if I have to, or I can always delete and start over. Okay? So I'm going to complete this current le the current leg. That's the Joe portion. That's the Brooklyn to Newington to Bristol portion. He's going to end in the yard. So I'm going to say split load. But before I do, I want to make sure I verify that my blue diamond is on the line that says yard. So I split. Will it be split in Bristol? Yes. This is the load completion screen. This is not a new window. You see this every time you complete a load. So if this is new to you, you've never completed a load before. And probably someone else is doing it. But this is the load completion. Anytime you complete a load, this is the same screen that pops up. And basically it's saying, hey, we're completing Joe, this truck, and this trailer in Bristol, 119 total miles. We're going to update these equipment pieces with this city, state, location information, and accumulate these miles into the vehicle profiles, and we're doing it at 10 a.m. Is that okay? And for me, the answer is, yes, it is. New load ID, 1119S, that's my split load. Okay, new window. We didn't see this before when we split a pending load, and the reason why is because the load was actually, was because it was pending, and this is specific to an assigned load that had a driver on it because it's dealing with his payment information. The system is now aware that Joe did not drive the full length of the trip. He did not make it from start to finish. Down at the bottom is the original calculation. We originally calculated Joe for going the full 107 miles, the full $1,200 of revenue that were considered and included in his pay percent, and he is going to get 22% of that 1200 for 264 But in the top is the adjustment. It's the system going, hey, wait a minute. He only went 60 miles of that 107. That's not the full $1,200. It's more like a little bit over 50%. Okay? So... We're only going to base his pay off of 662.22 because based on the mileage, that's how we're going to allocate his revenue. So 22% of that number is 145.69. Okay? So 55.6%. You can see it. It's all right here. Okay? So you, here are your choices. If you don't like that calculation, don't accept it. You want to put something else in there? Put in your own pay. It's fine with me. But this is what the system does, okay? But you have the you have end say. If you don't like it, delete it. You need to add something else. Click add. Give them a bonus. Give them you know more. Give them less. It's your choice. But the system will make this if you're splitting them and you have rates set up, yeah, and if everything is set up correctly, it will make that calculation for you. So I'm going to accept this new pay. I like the way it figured it out. I'm with it. I'm on board, so I'm going to hit accept new pay. Okay? Now we're going to, I'm going to click next just to bring me to the very, and it's a pending load. Here's 1119S, pending. Okay? I'm going to close this. We're going to hit refresh. 
Here it is, pending load. Where's Joe's load? Where's the 119, 1119 portion? It's complete. Here it is right here. Joe, complete, truck, trailer. Back to my active. So this pending load, it's a pending load. You treat it like any other pending load. You go in, you F11, and you assign the guy that's going to go and deliver the rest of it. So if I want to do Louie, I double click, I give Lou a truck, double click, close, and then now it's assigned, and then you do your statuses, you mark it in route. I hit pay on, on Lou. Lou gets what's left over. Once again, Lou doesn't get the full 1200 Lou gets what's left of the revenue. And again, this is another reason if you pay drivers percentages, very, very important, if you pay a driver a percentage, this allocation is critical. You try to pay a guy 22% on the back half of the split and you don't let the system allocate. In other words, you're deleting. Sorry, Paul. You're, you are deleting these. Then I can't calculate 22% if there's no revenue allocated to this portion of, his, of the split. So I know that was somebody, there was a question that somebody had asked. I'm re-rating my load after it's split, and it keeps telling me that there's no revenue, there's no revenue to calculate the percent. Well, are you letting your revenue allocate? On the allocated charges, are they flagged to include in pay percent? Because if, if, if neither one of those, if either one of those is not true, if, they've, if they're either not there or they're not flagged as percent, then I can't calculate 22% of no revenue. The answer is zero every time. Okay, so those are two good. That's a good example of when you definitely need to allocate revenue. I need revenue on both sides to be able to calculate a driver's pay percent. Okay. All right. We're going to do one more. And in this example, I'm not going to rate my load. Okay. I'm going to split the load without revenue on it. And this. This is, there's two conditions after that where one I feel is, is good and one I feel is bad. Um, when you, if you split before having the charges on there. And I understand that in some dispatch environments, the dispatchers just don't know the charges or that the, it doesn't get rated until whether it, you're waiting on a weight ticket, um, a scale ticket, because you don't rate your loads until you get your scales in. So you're not putting the revenue on. Um, maybe it's not your job as the dispatcher. You book the load. Somebody else's billing is rating them. I understand there will be conditions where the revenue will not be put on. So let's let's work that condition. Okay. So um, I'm just going to grab a an already built and assigned load, if you don't mind. So I'm just going to double click on it and show you. I will. Um, I'm actually, let me choose a different one here. Dayton, Sydney, this is the one. Okay, so I'll use this one right here. No revenue. Everyone can see that there's clearly no revenue on the load. I'm going to go in, I'm going to assign it. Okay, so we'll put Brian on this load. Brian comes with his own truck. I'm going to choose a trailer number. Um, I'll use a 300 trailer. Good. Save it. I'm going to mark him in route. Okay, he's in route. I'm going to split the load. Now I'm moving a little bit quick because this is our third time through and I want to make sure that I show you. So I'm going to hit split load. I'm going to click add. I want to put my split point in. Remember, I tile my windows. Let's use what's available. I'm going to choose my KBY for my yard. I'm going to make sure that I arrive at my, my, my drop yard after I've made my pickup. So 10 a.m., stop three. I'm going to save it going to insert it. I'm going to read my things. Do I want to assign the trailer? Yes, I do. Do I want to assign the tractor? No, I don't. Do I want to complete the current leg of the load? Yeah, Brian's done. Let's, or in this case, let's not. Let's say no. So I'm going to hit split load. It's going to be split in Bristol. Yes. Here's my new split load number. Okay. No payable revenue exists, so payments were not calculated. What does that mean? It means that I didn't have any revenue, so I'm not going to calculate the driver's pay. Sounds legit. Okay. So now it's trying to show you that there were no original payments. Do I want to add a new payment? Yes. 
I'm going to flat pay this guy $50 for splitting this load for me. And I'm going to click accept new pay. Here we are, 112 and 112F. I'm going to double click and look at 112. No revenue. Okay? No allocation. So how do I get revenue on it? When is it okay? So the system will still allocate revenue if you rate using a rate schedule. Okay? So what does that mean? It means that if All Star Freight has a rate schedule and I say rate, it will actually take, and based on my split point, when it returns the rate, it will allocate based on my split. So here's the revenue, and if I click Next, here's the rest of the revenue. If I were to view it through the invoice, it puts the two pieces together for my full 1470 Okay? If you have a rate schedule, the system will still allocate it for you. What if I don't have a rate schedule? What if I want to click Add and I want to flat charge them? Well, now you have to manually allocate. I cannot have the system allocate for you if you're adding the revenue after the split. You have taken the system's powers away from it by waiting to put the revenue on until after the split. So if you want it allocated, you have to do it yourself. So if I want to go 1400 and I want to do, I can do 750 right? And then I can click Next. I can add that same flat line. And I can do 650 And now if I go in and I print my invoice, I get a single line. So I can't allocate it myself manually, and it will still put the pieces back together for me. Okay. I can even do it if I'm using a mileage charge. So let's see if I have a fuel surcharge in here that uses mileage. Um, fuel mile. Perfect. So if I want to charge um, 42 cents a mile, if I put the half miles on this, so let's I'm going to say uh, um, 77, I can add the same fuel. The rate has to match, but then I can put 65 miles here. Now when I print the invoice, it puts 142 miles at 42 cents, and it pieces it back together. If I have two different rates, then it won't put them back together. I will make that, I will point that out. If the rate are two different rate, number, rate amounts, it will list them as two separate line items. So if you want it to put them together, the rates have to match on both halves of the allocation. So I hope everybody understands allocation. Um, I find it to be a very hot topic for people that split trips and um, people want to correct it and think it's broken, but it's not. Um, again, it can be disabled, so um, all of those things. So, I ho like I said, I hope I hope you learned. Um, so we talked about uh, splitting before and after, after the driver picked up, allocated revenue, how it, what it means and how it works, unrated. Um, when rating um, with no revenue, splitting loads, whether they have revenue or not have rating after a split. I showed you how to rate after you split it, and it still allocates. Okay, so we talked about whether or not you should complete them. Now, what about viewing your splits? How do you view splits? So if I look at this, and it's in the assignment window, there's this really cool button here that says view splits, and this is probably one of my favorite things to do is I can actually click on that, and this screen is super informative, okay? So I can actually toggle, see how I can toggle between the two pieces of the split? And it shows me as I toggle the sequences, it changes this information. So in sequence one, I go from Newington 
unloaded origin to pick up at all star and I drop at the back in the in the in my yard. Okay? Over here it shows me the miles and the revenue and the and how it was basically the allocation. This is the total. Okay? It shows me the driver, tractor, and trailer. Who's getting paid and how much he's getting paid. Now I'm going to switch. This shows me the rest, right? The yard to Brooklyn. This is the driver's unloaded origin, by the way. So for all of you that are, well, well what's that? Well, that's, that's this driver's Greg's deadhead to get to the yard. So from yard to Brooklyn, 96.8 miles. Here's the remaining revenue for the total of, so 677.30 plus 782.34 should give me 1459.64. And then this is, George is assigned to this load, okay? So it's giving me his assignment. So the information changes based on what I'm looking at in the screen, okay? And it's a great way to look at the to look at it. And if you notice, I can. Oops, sorry about that. If I go into that uh, view splits, if I hit that and I hit select, it brings me to that load number. Okay. So that's a very um, very good way to view the splits. Now you can also there is a um, there's a split load view here as well. Okay. Um, this does not show completed, and it will only show S portions. All right. Uh, you want to make sure your date filter is there, but if you've already completed, so this is, this is designed to only show you pending S portions. Not, well, by pending, I mean uncomplete from the split point on. If they've already been delivered, they get removed from the view. I'll show you. I'll go back to active. 112S there. Let's uh, let's change 112. Mark it complete. Okay. 112S. I'm going to go to in route. I'm going to hit refresh here. 112S is in route. If I go to splits, it's already gone. They are. It's it's ascending. Once once you mark it in route, it's no longer displayed here. That's it. It's it pulls it. So. I know that was one of the questions someone had asked. How come I don't see anything in split loads? Well, if you only see them if they're if they're if they're left as um, as pending or assigned. Once you bring them out, so I'll just right click and split this load real quick. Add. So 1115S, as soon as I get in and I look, there, you'll see it. It'll still be there when I assign it, but once I mark it in route, boom, it'll go away. Okay? Um, anytime you're in one of these views, I'm going to do completed loads for the last 30 days. Um, now I'll actually click on completed loads. It's just testing, see who's paying attention. Okay. Always it will order the the one nine, one nine S. Right? So you get your you get them in a row. Three five, three five S. Right. So something to keep your eyes open for. So in summary, what we reviewed today, initializing the split process from the location that's convenient, dispatch board or assignment screen, how to actually go through and split the trip, right? Understanding the term allocated, what happens to my revenue, why is it different, Why? how come I don't have the full amount anymore, we've allocated it. We watched the progression of our split trips. We went from pending loads, we had assigned loads, we had in route, marking them complete. We progressed it through the full stages of the splitting. And then 
understanding that split trip report, that view that I was showing you, looking at those that split button, looking at the two halves, okay, um, and, and being able to identify what we did on that split, and it's a great way to see the both pieces from within one window. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to open it up to questions. I am going to unmute everybody. Not yet, though. I'm going to just make this. Um, we're going to try to uh, be considerate. I know that if everyone has speaker phones, when I unmute, if you have background noise, while people are asking questions, I don't want, I can't mute because I need to be able to have the questions be asked. If you could manage your own mute button or control the volume in the background, I would be super appreciative of that. Um, we'll take turns. We've got about uh, maybe about 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so to answer some questions. And um, I'm going to unmute right now. So welcome back. Thank you. Um, and some brave soul would like to step forward and be the first question. Steve, uh, Drew Peterson. Hey, uh, uh, when we split the loads, how come we can't change the pay basis and make right, proper calculations from there? Right. If you open a load up and just do like a, a assigned load that you're going to split. That okay, so I'm going to go in. I'm, I'm going to assign my load. All right. And now you want me to split it? Split it. Okay. Am I am I concerned with the revenue or am I concerned with the payment? The the revenue. Okay. Now, how come we tried it before? Like on the pay base on the pay base side, how come we can't change that number? Because a lot of times the the second half of our legs, sometimes we're having to pay more than we're even getting for the load. But we tried it to where the, like this would be the first half of the load, and if you split it to where the second half of the load might only be like two hundred dollars, but we paid the driver seven hundred dollars. How come we can't change that pay basis? All right, so you want to be able to modify that pay basis after you split. Okay, so yeah. let's go through and let's we'll do that real quick. I'm going to split the load, um, and I'm going to highlight. I'm just going to hit split load. Yes, I'm going to say okay. And when you go when you go to the S side of this load, the split. Yeah, let's look. Um, so it's allocated, and so you should be able to. Let me let's look at the S portion. Okay, like okay. the S so portion. The they say I want to pay. I say I want it to be like it, they they were getting, or go to the front. It don't matter. Change that number yeah. to like fifteen hundred. So fifteen hundred. We want to pay him off his percentage off of fifteen hundred, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so if I modify that, and now we're going to go and I'm going to assign, I'll pick a, I'll pick them a driver, um, and I will pay that driver a percentage. And so it gave me 22% of 1500 Okay, so it did do it. Because before we were having trouble that way. We were trying to change because a lot of times, say, if a, the second half of the of the trip, you know, it might only be a hundred miles. Well, we we pay a flat rate on this. Go ahead, Jill. Okay. So a percent driver will always get a percent off of the pay okay. basis. So whatever number I stick in here, that's what they're going to get. And it doesn't because before it was when we were trying to do it, it would it would screw things up to where the, it screwed up the load when you went to invoice. So maybe we were just doing it wrong. Um, maybe if you were adjusting this revenue number, then it would. So if you were okay. putting it the fifteen hundred in revenue yeah, rather than pay basis, yep. then okay. so we can do, yes, so it we would can pay them pay off of that. But what it would do is if I change this to fifteen hundred, all right. So now they. It'll change the pay basis, but guess what? On the other side of it, this still says 1332. So now I'm going to bill not not 1500 total or not my actual number because I just changed the way that the system allocated the revenue. Yep. 
So that's that was my so, question. So pay basis does work, so that helps us out. That's, that's use pay basis, not the revenue. That's okay. correct. Okay. Appreciate it, Steve. Great. All right, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, I'm going to unmute all again. Again, I'm going to ask that if you have noise in the background, if you could manage your own mute button, I would certainly appreciate it. Um, does, does I, do I have another question from the field? Yeah, yeah I have Carolyn. Carol? Carolyn, yes. I have a question. Carolyn, yeah. yes, please go. Once the load has been split, you know, can you unsplit the load? Say, say, for instance, you split the load because um, the driver had to have some time off, and all at once he didn't need the time off, so it's not split anymore. Can you unsplit the load, or does it have to stay split? That's a great question, um, and that's the one thing that I did forget to go over, and it's actually my favorite question, and the reason why is because the unsplit process, and this is its really just my sadistic reason why, it's called delete and start over. You cannot unsplit a load. Okay. Um, I could assign the same driver to the second half of the split, and it's not going to change what he gets paid. But if you don't want the load to show up as being split, the only thing that you can do is from a pending status, right mouse click and delete the load. It will tell you that it's part of a split sequence, and it will once you split it, it will delete both parts. But that is the only way to do an unsplit, Carolyn, is to, okay. is, there is no such thing. It's a delete, and then you can rebook the load um, under a new number. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And, <laughs> so that's my inside joke about it being my favorite question. <laughs> All right. All right. Excellent. So we want to make sure that you can contact us if you want any additional training. Um, you, we will be... Um, in Denver, Colorado, the 14th through 17th at our Prophecy Visions user conference. Um, we invite you to join us. It will be more of some of these wonderful personalities here at Prophecy. Um, you will have um, uh, – it will give you a, a little bit of insight uh, to the entire Excellus Corpor Corporation, which we are a, uh, a division of. Um, we would certainly love to meet you in person and, and spend several days with you at this conference. Um, so if you have any interest, uh, do not hesitate in contacting your account rep. Um, so I want to just thank you all for attending. Um, you can contact us at 800-776-6706 or at info at mile .com. We are We welcome any suggestions for any future uh, webinar trainings. Um, and also comments about today's training um, so that we can help improve uh, what we put out there for you uh, through these we webinars. So thank you all once again. I appreciate you coming out this afternoon, and I hope you all have an excellent week.